Blessed be back in church, amen? Amen. And I want to welcome all of you to Gospel Light Baptist Church. It's good to have you with us today. And let's take our Bible. Let's take our Bible and turn uh, back to our text there, Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. We're going to have a social blessing to have churches officially open again. And we've been having the online services. And so they're doing those ones, and 10 people, 10 people, like the president had said. But now we're open up to have more people in the church now. And we pray as we continue to do the work here. And I want to thank um, uh, Brother Robert and Pastor Pacific. Um, yesterday, I don't know what time they even finished working yesterday. We haven't told you. 6.25. <laughs> yesterday, they were working on this this morning at like 6 o'clock. They're here working, getting the audio, the sound, the video ready. And even now they're doing the live streaming. And so it's better when you can do live streaming for people also. And so we're working on that, doing that one. And it's a blessing to see how God is providing for the equipment, for the things that we're doing. And it's my prayer that we'll continue to be open. Meaning as we're open, we're going to continue to do the video. So if one of you're sick, you're at home, you can still be with us on the service. If you're traveling up country, you can still be watching. Huh? Even another country, you can still be with your church that day. Now let me say this though, the video doesn't replace the church. Amen. You need to be in the church, amen. Uh, but it's a blessing to have that opportunity to reach more people with the gospel, with the message of salvation, and also to encourage one another uh, with the message that we have. And so, but it is wonderful to be in church again, be with our church family. And, you know, the Bible talks about that all things work together for good. This morning we have a, a short time to give some testimonies. Uh, Pastor Charles had a blessing. He talked about the closings right now is given to him. You know, I wanted to have a blessing too. I asked him for the man's name who gave him and he won't give me the name. So, <laughs> but anyway, but it's good to give um, a blessing. It's good to, uh, when people help one another, uh, and we know that things work together for good to them that love God. And so, another thing, is, like we said, the recording, we've been wanting to do that for a long time. Pastor Thomas, how long we talked about making videos for our sermons and light? And we delayed, delayed, delayed. Now, coronavirus pushed us. God said, I want you to do it now. And so, it's been a blessing to see that uh, ministry now. As a matter of fact, Brother Robert, where's Brother Robert? He's there, raise your hand. Look back there in the back, that's Brother Robert. Uh, he's working for our church now. Um, he's helping Pastor Pacific with IT work. Um, it takes time to go through the videos, to edit, to do what, and for training and for what, um, the, the lessons we do. So he spends a lot of time uh, doing those things. We're thankful for that ministry there. And in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Continue in what? Prayer. prayer. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, now the title of our message today is Continue in Prayer at Thanksgiving. I'd like to start off our message this morning by asking Pastor Charles to come. Just to thank the Lord for us being able to be in church today, uh, for church to be open, and ask the Lord to bless the message today, to speak to our hearts. And also today I'd like you for us to be praying for Pastor John Bosco. His church is voting for him today to become their senior pastor. And so be praying for that for all to go well also. I know they appreciate your prayers. But in thinking about Thanksgiving, would you come and thank the Lord for us being together again today and pray for Pastor Bosco and for um, the message for today. Yeah, before I go for a break, please, Pastor James, remove the mask when you talk to the <laughs> <laughs> So what we get with the message here, the president said you should be with masks. But it's very complicated to, to communicate to people when you are asking this problem. Okay, I'm here to, to pray that in God for what has done for us. But a brief question. What has been there for us? As Pastor James has said, people have been asking us to hear you call the church, you serve the Lord. Where can we get your support? Where can we get your message? And we had no, no answer for that. Now we are thankful that during the COVID period, God 
answer is that during the, 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 the Ghana service, my son was COVID as a teacher. What we have learned out of COVID, are we going to forget them immediately after? No. The message is taken to be carried on. This is one of them. Now our messages can be downloaded. Our messages can be followed on YouTube and so on. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you made it possible for us to be around here again. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you that you can see brothers and sisters again. We thank you that can hear clearly the voices of our pastors talking to us. We pray that you guide us, Heavenly Father. We pray for whatever is happening in your church across the world, Heavenly Father. But especially we pray for Pastor John Bosco in Etebe, as they are voting right now, for the pastor to take on that church, Heavenly Father. We pray that you, talk, you touch them and you, you guide them well, Heavenly Father. Chase away the devil and the devil, whatever the devil's plan may be, let your will be done. Heavenly Father, be with us in this service. Guide us and protect us always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The pastor almost represents our legal department. I saw you take up the message. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. okay. Now, I'm glad we are alone. In some churches, there are many people on the platform together. But I'm isolated now. Amen. And so I'll do that so you can hear me well. Yeah. But um, follow the SOP still. I have to make sure we're following those things. And so as we went to the Word of God today, continue in prayer and watch with the same with thanksgiving. We're going to be thankful. This is the title of our message, Continue in Prayer and Thanksgiving. I have so much to be thankful for today. This, this morning, seeing some of you that I've not seen for several months. I haven't been following online, but I tell you, I've been missing seeing you in person. It's a blessing to see each one of you here today and to be together again as a church family. And so, we need to be praying for one another. We need to be thankful to God for His goodness. But you know, even though this lockdown is not as much as it was before, we're still in a partial lockdown. We need to continue in prayer because there are still people getting sick. There are still people in the hospital. There are still businesses that are struggling. There are still people looking for employment. Schools have still not yet been started. So it's not time to stop praying. We need to continue in prayer. That these things can be finished. That people can get back to their work. That lives can be restored for healing and sake. And for health and for all these things. And so we need to continue to pray. There are some who are suffering. There are businesses that have been closed permanently. You might say, well, how can I be thankful? And then you can praise the Lord if your business is still open, even if you're struggling. You say, how can I be thankful when I'm struggling? You're not going to shut down. <laughs> you're still moving forward. Huh? There are some who've been put out of their homes. Maybe you're struggling financially, but you're still in your home. There are some who have no food. But to praise the Lord, even if it's pushed on detail. Pastor, I'm just like this. But you know what? It's okay sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you need food, you don't care what you do have. Amen? And we want to learn to be thankful for whatever God is doing to us. Even when we're struggling, there's other people who are struggling even more. During this lockdown, there's some people that I know that had food. And we thought to send them some money. Other people have thought to send them some food. Other people have done other things. We need to understand that there's others who are also struggling. I mentioned this in the message this morning. One thing that the Lord put on our hearts about here in our church here. Here in this lockdown has been a struggle. Huh? At the end of every month, it's like there's not enough money for everything, but somehow God keeps providing anyway. It's amazing to see how God has continued to provide. Even now, we have to forgive us for our renovation still. There's some of the things we got done. The skirting along the ceiling is finished now. Even on the post, they put the skirting on there. It's looking very beautiful now. Uh, we have a paint, but we ran out of time to paint. We thought we had a week and a half before church was open, but I'm not complaining. Praise the Lord, the churches are open. And so there's still some things we're getting done before next week. We'll get those done. 
The few men have been over there to the men's toilet team when we expanded that one and want to make it nice. Next week we should have the sinks and those things also. And God is continuing to bless, but I know the struggles that we've had. And so the Lord put on my heart what I want to do. I want to sell 30 pastors with maybe like 50,000 each. Uh, and I even started this morning. And I was thinking about that. I thought, we're going to help other pastors. We're going to help other pastors. And so our pastors, we're going to help them also with that. And it may not be a whole lot, but it's something to help. Just to say we love you and we're praying for you. Just to be that encouragement. Everything doesn't have to be perfect with us. For us to to help others. It's good to help one another. It's good to pray for one another. It's good to be there for one another. There's many people still struggling today. And so we need to continue in prayer. But not just in prayer, but also in thanksgiving. I want to see how these things go together this morning. And I want to see how these things can be a help to us today. When we talk about continuing prayer, look at Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, verse 1. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. This is talking about our relationship like with others. Uh, like maybe as an employer employee relationship today. All right? It's talking about treating others fairly or justly. Then it says in verse 2 continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 6. And so we see in the first verse we just read, it's talking about a relationship with man. The second verse is our fellowship with God. It's interesting how God put these things two together. The first verse about man, our relationship, the second verse about one another. Let me just say, if you're not right with one another, then it may be that you're not right with God also. This can affect even our prayer life. We need to be careful about how we are together. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 6. Let no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. You see that? In any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we've also have borne you and testified. For God hath not called us into uncleanness, but into holiness. Verse 8. He therefore that despiseth not man, not man but God. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man but God. Who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. And if you're despising your brother or sister in Christ, it's like you're despising God. That's maybe I have to agree with everybody. Okay. That's maybe I have to work together with everybody. But that's still your brother and your sister in Christ. That can give you your fellowship, your relationship, or your fellowship with God. That might even be able to hinder your prayers. So as we see this verse 1, it's interesting verse 1 and 2 other together there. Be right with man. Uh, and also pray with this man. Now, it is, we need to be careful about judging one another. Especially when it comes to our church family. There are times when we're commanded to separate from others. But we want to be very careful about this. That's not your first option. This church is a church family. We're to be together. There's to be that unity that is there. These type things are all in accordance with God's will. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. When you're dealing with one another, you want to do it for their benefit or for the word of God. For what's right. Not for what you want, but for God's will. According to God's word. Now I command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh what? Disorderly. And I and not like the commission which you received of us. Look at verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in what? Well done. What does the next verse say? And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, know that man, and I will come to them that he may be what? 
Yet the problem not is an enemy, but a punishment as a what? So our relationship with one another, especially in this church family, and even without, but especially in this church family, with one another, it's important for us to be right with one another. It's important for us to be together in what we do. Yes, there's times when the Bible says you have to separate from someone, but not because you're mad at them. Not to seek some type of revenge or vengeance. Not an anger or frustration. But so that that person will get right with God. So that person will walk with God. Are you getting that? That's the only time there that we talk about those things. You still love them as a brother, but why are they going to be ashamed? So they'll get right with God. The purpose of that is not to try to discipline someone, but why do you protect yourself from whatever they're doing? And you stay right with God, and two, to encourage them to get right with God. And those are things that are there. But again, it's not an anger. If, if you ever separate from someone and you enjoy it, there's something wrong with you. To me. That's the last one. So continue in prayer. Watching the same with Thanksgiving. But also being just and equal. Yes, mother pointed. Yes, mother relationships. But in every area of life. We have to be careful what we do. Now let's look at first Thessalonians 517. First Thessalonians 517. What about this matter of continue in prayer? That word continue, what does that mean? It means to continue. Uh, it means to keep going. It means to persevere, to move forward, continue in prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without fight. Ceasing. What I mean, you could say the continual attitude of prayer. What do I mean? Pray about everything. Lord, what work do you want me to do? Lord, what should I do in my business? Lord, who should I hire for my business? Lord, who should I do this for? What should I do here? Lord, what is your will? Pray about it, not just about spiritual matters, but every matter. Work, home, friends, church, everything. To go to God in prayer. For it doesn't matter what it is. Pray about your home life. Pray for your family for health. For finances, for wisdom. Pray for your work. Now, let me say this. If you have a job, you know what you should be doing? You should be praying and ask God to bless your employer. You know why? Because that can also be helpful. But also, you ought to be thankful that your employer is employing you. That's true? Yes. If someone, if you're working for someone, you have to be thankful for that. So many times you get upset. I this one. He should be more. He should be more. He should be more. But be thankful and ask God to bless them. And do your best at work. Lord, help me to be the best employee there. Lord, help me to work hard. Help me to do this while. But what do you read what you saw? If you're there at work, working hard, your boss wants you to appreciate your work, you're thankful, you're kind, you're doing what's right. Those are the type of the people that the boss is looking for to be able to promote you. Huh? But sometimes if we're not careful, we're just we're, we're too busy looking for the next best thing. Not even thankful for what we have. Be thankful for your employer. Pray for your employer. Pray for God to bless them. And then also pray and ask God to help you do that prayer. Then you can give a testimony to others. Pray for your friends. Pray for the church. Pray about everything. And everything. Pray. Also look at James chapter 4 verse, verse 1. Pray according to God's will. Pray according to God's will. James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not bits, even of your lust of one another? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, you fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. 
He asked and received not. Why? Because you asked for this. You're asking for the wrong reason, the wrong purpose. Then they consume that upon your lust. What are you praying for? <clears throat> Maybe what you're praying for might have been good in itself, but why do you want it? So you can be more faithful in your service to God. So you can be more faithful in church. So you can maybe have more time to um, do that which your Christian should be doing, like reading a Bible, praying, um, inviting others to church, going so many. Why are you praying for the things you're praying for? Just to fulfill your own desires? Because it's a bright and shiny new phone? <laughs> because it's a new car? Because it's a what? What is what is the desire behind that request? Is this something that's going to draw you closer to God? Is this something that's going to help you and draw you closer to your church family? Is this something, what, what is this, what impact will this have in your life? And by the way, God knows your heart. God knows your thoughts. God, the Bible says, God knows the secrets of the heart. I can't deceive God. <laughs> but if I have the right motive, if I pray and ask me, God, for the help to me in some area, because God is going to help me not only in my own life, but even maybe I can be a better testimony to others, I can be more faithful to church, I can do this, and I'm asking in accordance to God's will. I'm asking in accordance to God's desire. I can see those prayers being answered many times. But it has to be sincere. It truly has to be your desire. In other words, it is God blesses you that that's what you want to do. Uh, there was a man in our church one time saying, Pastor, pray for me. I'm trying to get this job, and I forget this job. I want to get a lot of money. And I want to tithe, and I want to do this. So he got the job, and he quit church, and ran away. I don't know where he went. <laughs> oh, God knows our heart. We don't need to make big promises to God, because God knows. You can tell me whatever you want to tell me. You can get me to pray for you. But God still knows the truth. We need to be honest with God. We need to be honest with man. Also, let me say this. Pray for others. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4 to 4. Turn over to there. Pray for others. Even pray for those that you don't like. Pray for those that you might think was an enemy. Pray for those that you think are cause you a brother. And I'm not talking about God kill them. No, we're not saying that. God destroy them. No, we're not saying that. No. God, God help them to do what's right. God help them to do what's right. God help them to get saved. God help them some way. Matthew 5, 44, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that what? Hate you. And pray for them. They did wrong to me. They lied to me. They stole my money. They did this. They used me. Pray for them. Which is why they use you and persecution. God just said, you know what they've done? But pray for those. Give them more pleasure and comfort. It doesn't have to be that they're your enemy. You may not walk with them, you may not be with them, but it doesn't mean you have to be against them. Pray for one another for wisdom and godliness. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. I like this verse here. I, I try to share this thing with many people everywhere I go. It doesn't matter if I preach in the States, if I preach in here, wherever. We're always praying for principal things, for health, safety, Finances, what? But in Colossians 1, verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We need to pray for one another for spiritual matters also. Lord, help this person to walk with you. Help this person to do what's right. Help this person.
person to serve you, to be faithful. Not just pray. And it's okay to pray for help. It's okay to pray for other things. But don't forget to pray for spiritual matters. To me, those are even more important. And if you know your Bible, you'll understand why. Because if you're not right with God, you're going to have the discipline of God in your life. If you're saved, if you're a child of God, and you're not right with God, you're going to have problems in your life. But if you don't, then you're not a child of God. The Bible says. Because God disciplines every son that you receive it. And so, we need to pray for those spiritual matters. Because God works through circumstances. God works through finances. God works through people. Some of the problems you might have in your life as a Christian might be God disciplining you. And so this spiritual walk with God is very important. Because if I'm not right with God, if we're not right with God, we may not have the blessings of God. And even beyond that, we might have the discipline of God in our life. That's in the book of Hebrews. And so the spiritual part makes a difference in our physical life. We try to separate the two. Oh, this is business. This is church. No, this is my life. God has control of every area of my life. I need to serve God in every area of my life. Also, pray for others' physical needs. That's about to. James 5.13 says, Let me sick among you. Sing among you afflicted. Let him pray. Is any married, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders or the pastor of the church. Let them pray over him. Prayer is important. For physical, for spiritual, for emotional, it doesn't matter what it is. We can go to God in prayer. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not bought for it. If whatsoever man saw that shall he also be. You say, I want people to pray for me. Are you praying for others? Huh? Are you praying for others? Well, we really want this huh? Continue in prayer. Now this next part. Watch in the same with thanksgiving. This is interesting. Watch in the same. Say, guardian, be careful. Huh? If you take it several different ways, this is one way. Watch in the same, be careful, make sure you're praying properly. Continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. In prayer, with thanksgiving. Now, let's look at a few verses and we'll see what this means about watching and prayer. Look back to Psalms chapter 95. I love the Psalms. The Psalms are full of prayer. They said, if you want to learn how to talk to God, read the Psalms. If you want to learn how to deal with man, read Proverbs. Okay. That's not a good wisdom, but Psalms has so much about prayer. King David made so many mistakes in his life. But he's like the apple of God's eye. Why? He made mistakes and he threw himself on the mercy of God in prayer. Huh? He would make things right with God. And that's how we can be also. Psalms chapter 95, verse 1. Oh come, let us sing. Unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with songs. Psalms chapter 100. Psalms chapter 100, beginning of verse 3. The book of Psalms chapter 100, verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord, verse 5, for the Lord is what? Good. Doesn't matter what it is, God is good. God is good what? All the time. All the time, God is good. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And it's true of the door to all generations. The Bible says, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. 
Many times you see prayer and thanksgiving, prayer and rejoicing, these things are being put together. Why do we need to be thankful when we pray? Why? Well, so that you're not overcome with your problems. Sometimes all you can see is the problem. We are to be thankful to God for what He's done. So that you're not overcome with just hard aching. There's some people that only focus on the negative. No, God is good. If you can't find what God has been doing in your life, you're not looking very much. Or you're taking it for granted. You're just assuming. No. Every good thing I have is from God. So we're not overcome with depression. So we're not overcome with regret. So we're not overcome with anger and bitterness. So we're not overcome with doubt. Well, when, when you start getting angry, when you start getting bitter, you're not thankful to God anymore. When, when, when you're getting into that area of depression in your life, you're not being thankful to God anymore. Some people even start doubting their salvation. Am I even saved? Uh, you know what? We should never get tired of thanking God for our salvation. You know that? We should never get tired of thanking God for the life of us. So, so what life? I mean, you know my life? Well, I know the life of Jesus. Born in the stable and the nature of the animals. Born into poverty. Huh? I know that the life of Christ. Nowhere to lay his head. No hope. The guy holding the money stole the money. His friends betrayed him, deserted him. And yet, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. Huh? You still do what's right. I can do you. But you know this matter of thankfulness. When we're being thankful, we're getting eyes off of ourselves and giving them on God. We're maybe getting our eyes off of ourselves and being thankful even for the goodness of others. We're learning to appreciate what God has done for us. Someone here in our church told me a story some time ago. I asked him if it's okay to say, well, I'll say it. But he talked about he helped somebody with some school fees before. This is a young boy. He never met him before. You know, the boy comes. You know, he's healthy. And you know. Then he actually helped that boy with school fees. And he continued to help that young boy with school fees. But then one day, this boy comes with him, give me my school fees. Give me? The attitude? You have been helping you all this time, and now it's like you expected, not only do you just expect it, you're demanding. You don't even appreciate, you don't even say thank you. Now, the might even say anything about you. You should know how you think. Huh? You might say, huh? I can't help this one out. It's not even thankful for what that does. Let me find someone else who maybe will appreciate you. Uh, is that how we are sometimes? How do you think God feels? When's the last time you said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for what you've done for me. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for how you provided for me a place to stay, a bed to sleep on, uh, the food that I have. The friends that I have. Thank you, God, for whatever it might be. Thank you for my work that you've given to me. Thank you for the salary that I have. Who the salary what does that just living? Well, that's that place. I don't want to hire you now. Oh, yeah. I don't know if any employer in his right mind wants to hire someone of that out. You're the employer, no? You say, I'm not going to. This matter of thankfulness. If we learn to be thankful, it can help to protect our heart against these things. Huh? Otherwise, we start to have more problems. We become overcome with ourselves. Huh? We become overcome with pride, with self pity, with vengeance. Oh, yeah. And it can happen to me. It can happen to you. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor. It 
doesn't matter if you're a missionary or a layman, it doesn't matter who you are. This can happen to any of us if, we're, if we forget to be thankful. If we don't appreciate the goodness of God and even what others have done for us, we would become overwhelmed. And we just want to quit. We just want to give up. We just want it to be over. And again, that's when some people even take their very life. They commit suicide sometimes. They've forgotten about the goodness of God. But the first thing they forgot, they forgot to be thankful. Being thankful to God is very important in the Christian life. Because if you're not thankful to God, you might even think, what's the point of prayer? And when I pray, then look where I am. Even you start breaking your fellowship with God. We don't even pray as you should anymore. We just look for the next person who we think is going to help us. That's a very dangerous place to be in the Christian life. And it's amazing how it can come all about just from not being thankful. We think we deserve all this because of who we are. We think that it's all right with whatever it might be. And what happens is we've got to be there. Right? Let's make sure, even today, that as we pray today, that we're thankful to God. I challenge you times gone by. Every day, every day, when you pray, Made five things to God that you're thankful Five things. That's easy for me. I've got five things. But I, can even, I guess I can even be thankful for my wife. That's it. I, I'm thankful for my wife. <laughs> I bring so much to be thankful. There's a friend of mine, his name's Chris. We grew up together for about three years. I met him recently on a safari. Chris and I used to play basketball together, baseball together. I was just as good as him, I think. You know, he got a scholarship to go to the university to play basketball. He is taller than me. He get that idea. He played in the Olympics playing baseball. He has a little cup. He travels back and forth between the for his families. You know, he said, the man, he said, you know what? He said, you're so lucky. I said, what? He said, you have a family, your wife, your kids. I won't be able to worry about this. It's the same age. It's just a couple years ago. He said, you have so much to be thankful for. This is the man who's like looking at me and saying, I wish I had a family that grew up with that. But he doesn't. There's some men and women who are married. They can't even have children. They want to have children. They can't. For whatever reason. So many times we save our children for granted. So many times we don't appreciate our spouse. That's how people begin to drift apart. So many times we don't appreciate the friendships we have. So many times we don't appreciate, there's so many things. Every day you should name at least five things you think of God. Many of you wish you had a better job, but praise God, I've got a job, I can buy food. Huh? You may wish you had a bigger house, but praise the Lord, thank you God, I have a house where I can sleep. You go down to the pub, just one double room. You see people not sleeping on double room. Huh? There's so much we have to be thankful for, but we're not content with what God has given us. And so we forget to be thankful. And everything you thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's first Thessalonians 5:18. In everything. Give what? Give thanks. Thanks is very important to the Christian life. I wasn't happy with this lockdown, but I thank God that we had the video that we put online, the sermons and what. I thank God that we had some few people meeting together. We try to rotate out our leadership team to give other people an opportunity. I thank God even more now because we're here together. You know, it may not be exactly how I want it to be, but I praise God for what I have. I'm thankful for what God has given to us. I'm thankful for the opportunities we do have. And I pray God to give us more. 
but I'm so thankful for what I have. Learn to be thankful for what you have right now. Learn to be thankful for the goodness of God that you have in your life right now. Be thankful in everything you think. Continue in prayer. Watch in the same with thanksgiving. The last thing is this. Walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. When you pray, ask God for wisdom. Colossians 4, 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeem with the time. Let your speech be always with grace, season with salt, that you might know how you ought to answer every man. Now, let me say this. I try to not always say the first thing I think about. <laughs> we have an expression, engage your brain before your mouth. Okay? But sometimes your mouth gets engaged before the brain. That's when you get trouble. Okay? You just, you say something. When I do that, then the next thing I'm always saying is, I'm sorry I shouldn't have said it that way. Learn to make things right immediately. Okay? But pray and ask God for wisdom. Because you know, you're going to have challenges in life. You're going to have problems in life. So pray and be thankful for God that He's there to help you, to lead you, to guide you. And ask God, give me the words you have to say. Help me to do this in the right way. And Pastor Alice, Pastor Charles, these men can tell you, we talk about this. There's sometimes I'm like, Let's do this, and they're like, no. There's sometimes one of them is listening to this, and we're like, no. And the multitude of counselors are in safe. There's wisdom as you get godly counsel. There's wisdom as you pray and ask God to give you the words to speak. Huh? Let's use wisdom on you. When you pray, you start problems. Continue to be faithful to God. Look over in Psalms chapter 86. I'm going to close with these verses for you. Psalms chapter 86. These are some wonderful verses for you. Psalms 86 and verse 1. Bow down thy ear, O Lord. Hear me. Cry for me. And so, you know, it's almost like you say, God, just kind of go like this. Just, God, just kind of get your ear and kind of lean it towards me, God. I want you to hear my prayer. That's what he's saying. He said, Bow down thy ear, O Lord, hear me, cry for me. Preserve my soul, cry for me. O Lord, my God, save thy servant that trusted for thee. He said, God, I knew it was right. God said, I trust thee what? In you. Verse 3. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee what? Amen. Rejoice the soul thy servant. For unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. God, I'm trusting in you. God, you give me that joy. God, you help me to rejoice. Verse 5. For thou, Lord, art what? Oh, the psalmist, oh, yeah, God, I have problems, but God, I'm trusting you. God, I'm serving you. God, I keep me. God, bring that rejoicing back to me. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to what? Okay. Sometimes you have to ask God for that forgiveness. But also sometimes you need to be the one to forgive others also. Sometimes there's some offense that's come to you that you need to also forgive. And plenty of some mercy to all them that call upon thee. Give ear all morning to my prayer. And attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer this matter of prayer this matter of thanksgiving they go to them they're vital to the Christian life and I rejoice in today because we're meeting together but there's still some challenges we're facing there's still people in the hospitals there's still people getting sick there's still other things that are shut down there's still people who are suffering but my God can supply them our God can help us through every trial. And even now, if you're still facing some challenges, God is still good right now. I like those three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're not going to bow down. We're not going to worship the false God will deliver us. But if not, we're still not going to bow down. Uh, and 
and they were cast into that fire. I sometimes wonder what went through their mind when they cast that fire. They're probably scared of them. They hit down on the ground, the ropes burn off, and they're fine. You know, I imagine there's some rejoicing in there. <laughs> I imagine they're praising God now, for sure. But the thing is this. They trusted God before they're thrown in the fire. They trusted God and were willing to be thrown in the fire. They trusted God and continued to stand for Him, even as they're thrown into the fire. Even when they thought, my life was finished, I'm not going to die. And that's when God delivered them. And you thought they were strong before, you thought they were bold before, you thought they were rejoicing before, now we just see even more. Huh? Because God didn't just keep them from the fire, He delivered them in the fire. That's the kind of God we have. Even in the greatest struggle of your life, God is there. Even in your greatest trial, God is there. Even when you think your life is about to end, even physically, God can deliver. That's the kind of God that we have. And so we need to have wisdom and walk in wisdom. You know what we need to do? We need to trust God. We need to trust Him. We need to continue to pray and be thankful for all that God has done. Let us be faithful this day, and we'll see God do a great work. Uh, let us pray. Dear Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you for the message you bring. Lord, I pray that you help us to learn about being thankful. There's so many struggles, there's so many trials that we have today. There's people still having problems right now. Well, things are starting to get better in many areas. But there's so many struggles. Help us not to forget your faithfulness. Help us not to forget your goodness to us. Help us to keep our eyes on you to walk in wisdom, to walk by faith and not by sin, to be faithful to you. Lord, I ask that you bless all these things while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Let me ask you this. Are you saved? Have you ever trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? You might be here today in this auditorium or watch all night. I'm not asking why you're religious. Are you in church? But have you trusted Christ as your personal sin? If you're not saved today, if you say, Pastor, I want to be saved, if that should you just raise your hand while someone to pray for you, while someone to talk to you this morning. If you're watching online, you can, I'll be praying for you to trust Christ for your sin. My prayer will not save you, but I'll pray that you understand and accept Christ for your sin. So you know, all just raise your hand right here. Maybe there's someone here that says, Pastor, I need to get baptized. That's you, raise your hand. Who's one today? I believe coming for baptism. If you'd like to get baptized, also raise your hand. You said, Pastor, pray for me. I need to get baptized. Just raise your hand. If you'd like to be prepared for baptism, that's the time. But what about you in your heart today? Are you facing some trial? Is there something you're struggling with? Give that to God. Casting all your care upon Him. And you can be thankful that God cares for you. You can be thankful and know that God's going to help you that problem. You can be thankful to know that God can do all things. He can help you through it. God can provide. We can trust in Him. God is good. I would trust Him to Him. I would be thankful to Him. We get so stressed out. We get so worked up. We get so angry sometimes. And forget about the news. We forget to be thankful to God. And if we are thankful the way the Bible says, that tension, that anxiety, that can all melt away. We can have the peace of God which pass upon all understanding. Why? Not because the problem went away, but because we're trusting God. And we know that God is in control. Dear Father, I pray that you'll speak to our hearts today. Bless this time of invitation. Thank you, love you, Jesus. Christ.